Hello, everybody. Welcome back to... That's what happens when your brain is uh, not quite caffeinated yet. I apologize. Uh, let me try that one again. Barry! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Library of Ruin, a lore reading. This is the second part of the series of an indefinite amount of fucking episodes? I, I don't know how long this is going to last, but I imagine three or four episodes, because it's going to be after every chapter. Now, this came a lot earlier than expected. Some of you uh, saw that one coming. Others thought that I was going to probably wait a little bit longer so that I got some more books, but uh, no, we're sticking to the every chapter thing, so sit tight. We're gonna get into some sad shit, because we have a ton of Lulu pages and stuff to go through here, but... Before anything, no, actually, those are the only pages that we have to do is all the Lulu pages and then Lulu's official page. Well, shit. All right, cool. Let me turn this down in my ears, and uh, we're going to start with fucking Lulu's friend page one, if I have it, that is. I do. Okay. I thought that I miscounted for a minute, but I do have all four. And I think page one and two, yeah, have the same story, and then page three and four have the same story. So if I'm missing anything, let me know, guys, but uh, I don't think that I'm missing anything, because uh, even the wiki says the only thing that I should be missing is Yun's Office Fixer, page 2 and 3, but those don't seem to exist in the current build, so I don't think they exist. I think it's just this one page, which is fine. I'm okay with that. So we'll start with number one, right here. <clears throat> a peacekeeping office provides protection for requested territories for a certain period of time. Lulu is one of those offices, or Lulu's is one of those offices. The wording didn't fucking pop up in my brain properly there. What are they protecting against, you ask? The city, obviously. What I'm saying is, their job is to keep the area safe from all sorts of happenings and incidents that occur in the city. Of course, there won't be that much to do if this area is too small or peaceful. But man... Compared to us who have to wait indefinitely for somebody to make a request, Lulu's living a good life. At least she does something. And they don't have to worry about starving to death, even if they don't get requests. So she had a pretty comfy setup. I'm not shocked by that in the slightest. So, uh, on to the next page, then. This is gonna be a really short episode, I know. <laughs> As her friend, it's unfortunate that Lulu is struck with grief. I don't have any tears to shed for her, though, so I imagine this is after Mars. I've got my share of rough experiences. I'm just not sharing it with others. Well, I did say I'll help her out, but the truth is, my office figured out that we could find plenty of valuable loot in the library, and that's pretty tempting. The other one is probably thinking the same thing as me. I mean, what dummy would actually head to such a dangerous place motivated purely by a friend's sob story? That kind of intimate and deep relationship is long gone from this world, especially in this business. That's why I can't understand Lulu. Sure, let's say that her colleague died there. Even then, she should be valuing her own life, shouldn't she? She can be so stupid at times. Well, I have to go in with her anyway. Indeed. And now to go ahead and wrap up this whole entire story all together. I've been kind of waiting to read this page, so... This is going to be very, uh, very conflicting here because I have to read her page with that fucking typical valley girl lisp. So, that was the voice that I fucking gave her and we're going to have to stick to that. So, we're going to be getting into some serious territory here with a not so serious fucking reading of the dialogue. <clears throat> ah, crap. Another day without work. Fantastic. There's gotta be some case for us to take care of, like, fly tipping or something. I'm gonna forget how to move at this rate. If I told my friends about this, they're so gonna whine, like, Well, isn't it a good thing that you have a lot of free time? Or, Well, you're off. We're about to starve from the lack of requests. Those dummies. Think about it for a moment. You need results to promote a... To, uh, to promote to a... Jesus fucking Christ, man. Brain, come on. I need more coffee, apparently. <laughs> Think about it for a moment. You need results to promote to better fixer grades and see some growth in your office, right? And that's going to lead to higher income for us. You know what I'm working? Oh, fuck it. I, I'm getting annoyed of reading right now. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. We're done. Cut it out. <laughs> anyway. Uh, 
Anyway, okay, so now that we're done with that jump cut there, let's fucking try this one final time. Jesus Christ. Uh, where the fuck was I? Where the fuck was I? I lost where I was reading. This is terrible. Jesus. Okay, there we go. For now, I'm working with my boss, San, and some dork shaped like a ball of rice cake, but things could be better than this in the future, yeah? It's not like I have problems with my co-workers, I'm talking about stuff like weapons and office interior, you know, those kind of things. You get what I mean. I do bicker with Mars and snap at him often, yes, but that doesn't mean I hate him. San and Mars are both precious colleagues to me, though, yeah, I know what you're about to say. If fixers develop private relations or private feelings with one another, it could be much harder to bear whatever happens down the line, etc. I know what I'm doing is stupid. I have wits, unlike Mr. Rice Case, Rice Cake Face. But we're humans, it's just something that can't be helped. How could we just strictly detach ourselves from one another and focus on work? I tried acting nonchalant. I did, but I guess I can't do it. San said he feels the same way. I gotta envy Mars for being cool-headed all the time. Alright, there we go. That wasn't as sad as I thought that it was going to be, though, but that's fine. I mean, it basically is just solidifying the usual trope anyway, that she was just more emotional, naturally, because humans are humans. So... Yeah, that's that. So, alright, I guess we might as well continue this a little bit longer with just stuff that I need to do and all that shit, because I got a bunch of pages to work out, and I found out, just today, thank fuck, you can lock pages. So, I'm gonna start doing that. I wanna work on Lulu's page. I should work on her friends' pages, but I don't care that much. I mean, they look cool, so I might do it for appearance. And then I gotta get rid of these pages. We're not gonna get rid of them right now, fuck. So I gotta burn them into another page, but that's pretty much it. I just need to work on Lulu's pages and then possibly her friends' pages, and then we're going to move further on. I might just continue, though, into the next episode when the weekend hits, just because, I mean, why wouldn't I? It's not really too much to work on at the moment where I feel like I'm being detrimented by it, but I do want some of Lulu's actual combat pages. I thought that we could get like that really mean one that she has, but I don't think so. I think her best page is, uh, let me, let me back out of here. I think her best page is not set fire. There we go. Taste my flaming bat. I think that's like her best page right there. It's a really good defensive die that also enhances die and it has evasion and defense. So guaranteed defense and then a blunt, you know what I mean? So. That'd be a really good thing to throw in Yesod's room for all the blunt damage modifiers and stuff that you have from the murderer, so... I think I'm going to incorporate that in there. And then, of course, we have the next, uh, abnormality. I haven't clicked this yet. I don't know what the next abnormality is in any way, shape, or form. Nobody spoil that. So, that being said... Oh, yeah, we also have, uh, Netzack that we have to work on to fuck... Oh, well. I don't really care that much. We'll figure it out. I'm not worried. We will figure it out. Let me just pull these off of this combat book, though. And that's where we're going to continue on from later on. Like, like I said, nothing really changed. We just had this that we did last area between this and the episode before it, and just a lot of story reading. So we'll be continuing from there, getting the third Keter Librarian. And yeah, I, I might get Hod's Librarian personalized in the next episode, and that's where we'll start, though. So, until then, guys, I will see you later. Take it easy. I know this is super short, but I didn't expect the end of the chapter to be right behind the fucking Mars office, so... Yeah. I'll see you later. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm gonna try this one more fucking time. It's starting to get really annoying now at this point how many takes that I have done in Audacity to be able to get this fucking string of audio set up. Uh, my microphone's doing this really annoying popping thing lately. I thought it was fixed, so long as I don't have steam running in the background, but we're gonna try it without anything running but Audacity and see if my microphone pops. And if it does, I'm keeping the take anyway and throwing it onto the end of the video, and I'm apologizing ahead of time, but you guys will have to take it at 
just as is. I don't know why my microphone does this in Audacity, but it's really fucking annoying, and I haven't found a fix for it. I don't know, it just, it pops all the fucking time, and if your answer is get a pop filter or something, I, I use one, it doesn't, it doesn't help, something's wrong with the feed, I don't know what it is, though, but, dear god, it's annoying. On to the point at hand, guys, I just wanted to throw a just an insert at the end of the video here and just kind of talk about the way that I feel about, like, the way the characters are written in this and just throw my two cents on the, just the Lulu and Mars side story and stuff with it, I suppose. Definitely going into way too much detail about it, though, but this is a bit of a pastime of mine, and you guys already know that this is probably something that I was going to go into anyway. Like, it's not just about the story and the lore reading with these parts i wanted to just again this is where i'm going to encapsulate like all of my thoughts about all of that side shit that i am seeing and kind of just talk to you about things and get my ideas out there you guys can throw your two cents at me on how you interpreted it to me because one of those things that i'm going to continually try to push throughout this series to other people if they don't already understand this as a whole is just why i think project moon is pretty fucking decent and solid at their story writing and one of the main ways is just they don't really force anything down your throat on like certain things having to be a certain way like you know what i mean like they have subtleties in it and this is the idea of what i mean by subtleties in their story writing is for example the lulu and mars thing my main example that i'll throw at you is mars turning into a book right like it is insinuated from his story that he had a lot of weight on his shoulders in feeling like he needed to be, like, this really good high rank fixer, you know what I mean? He had a lot of potential and all of that stuff, and he just had this internal struggle where just, on one hand, he needed to prove himself and be a great fixer, and it just kept wearing away at him. I imagine it could have even led to why he was as kind of introverted as he was and silent and tried to suppress his emotions and stuff because it just, to him, he felt like that was what would have proved himself to make himself a better fixer, to kind of throw away that attachment to some extent and not let it get to him and think rationally about a situation. Meanwhile, on the other hand he's human just like anybody else's, as Lulu had mentioned, and he very much loved and valued his co-workers, San and Lulu, and all of that other stuff, and very clearly surfaces, especially in his ending dialogue, where you kill that character, and he says just something to the effect of, I should have told her how I felt. I believe that was literally verbatim what the line was, 50-50. But Anyway, like, that kind of stuff, for example. Like, assumedly, the reason why he turned into a book and why everybody else ran away was because he felt that he needed to stay there either out of protecting them or to prove himself. I would imagine more the latter than the former. And this is all up entirely to interpretation because they never revisit that in the it just direct detail of it in any way, shape, or form. And it just was an interesting side story to me that way, and more particularly, not even so much Mars. I like Mars as a character too, but let's talk about Lulu for a second, man. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, okay? One of the things, I've said this about fucking 14 times now, so I hope that I get this done in a nice, clear, and short, concise manner here. If there's one thing that I really love, it is a well- written, or at least above average, and passably written Sundra character. And yes, I am that guy. I am the Sundra lover, absolutely, when it comes to watching anime. Now, what the fuck am I talking about? If you guys have never, like, seen anime or, or know what I'm talking about with anime tropes and stuff like that, well, the Sundra character is notorious and categorized by being that character that is untrue about their feelings, or at least on a surface level. That is always the character that will, like, kick somebody in the face because they immediately think the protagonist is being a pervert or something because they unknowingly walk into a fucking locker room or something like that where everybody's half-naked. You know, that usual anime trope, for example. The Sundara character, you can bet your ass, is gonna be the one that kicks the fucking protagonist in the throat. But... Back onto the point at hand here, I love an extremely well-written Sundara character because 
There's nothing that pisses me off more than the character that is openly an asshole to everybody that they meet, cocky as shit, just not a fucking likable person with anything that they say to anybody, without, like, the wit, without, like, being funny or interesting or something like that, like, you know what I mean? Just a fucking asshole to everybody around them, but they're trying to ham-fist sympathy for that character to the audience because, I don't know, some kind of a past event or whatever. There's a reason why she's an asshole to everybody. Because she doesn't want to lose that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I fucking hate that shit. It's such a cop-out card and it just makes me hate the character even more. But Lulu's fleshed out, on the other hand, because they actually, like, gave her a really good value that makes her... Honestly, more admirable of a character than Mars, I would even argue, because not only is she just incapable of being able to just defy what she feels makes a human a human by being emotionally attached to the people that they're around and stuff and then reacting out of impulse and emotion. This is a common theme, by the way, that is reestablished a lot in Lobotomy Corporation, especially with the Sephira and Angela, and it kind of is trying to get into that usual sci-fi trope of bridging the gap between human and machine, you know what I mean? Like, logic over emotion kind of thing. It's something that's commonly visited in this universe, but... And as a story writing trope altogether, but aside from that matter, I find it really interesting in that just one of her biggest values as a character is just in her relations with people. Whether or not she openly is straightforward, hey, I love you guys and all that other stuff, or whatever the case is with it, though, it's clear to her co workers that she has attachment to them and it's clear to everybody around them and all that stuff. And that's what makes her different from like the usual way that that archetype is fucking done and it pisses me off how they how people always feel the need to do that. I'm just going to make this character an unlikable asshat and then you're supposed to sympathize with them in some way shape. Everyone's like no 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 no. The sympathy comes in that fact that you can tell from the way that she jokes with the witticisms and all of that stuff like that even if she's a hard ass and lashes out on Mars over eating like a cake or something like that or whatever the case is that like it's it's clear in demeanor that it's playful and not vicious and it just made it that much more of an interesting character at least to me like I don't know, she may not necessarily be an overly unique character, but she was just overly likable for me personally, and just on a level of, I guess going back to before, just a very human character, more or less. Like, I just, I don't know, I've seen a lot more people like this than people that are a lot more straightforward about how they are. I'm usually a pretty straightforward person, but I also still have that same level of not expressing everything that I feel, everything that I value, all of that stuff outwardly to other people. It's just a very common thing to see. If you want to really see if somebody gives a shit about you, you got to kind of look between the lines and in the subtleties in their behavior. And it just, again, just to me, I think it was just really well done with this character. And I wanted to make sure that that was orchestrated with my feelings in this at the end of the video right here and just fucking talk about that for a while lulu is best girl that is all so uh yeah that that's just end of rant right there i think i fucking covered everything for the most part so uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next part where uh we're gonna wind up doing that third librarian on kether floor like i said and yeah after that it's just on to this way i suppose so I will see you guys then. Take it easy. Probably not doing anything until Sunday involving this game. So I will see you then.